In this presentation, we will record our home loan, our mortgage into our personal QuickBooks file, and then we'll make an adjustment to that loan in accordance with the bank statement amount or the loan statement amount at a future time. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the home page. We currently have the open windows open. We can open the open windows by going to the view drop down and selecting the open windows list. We're now going to open the balance sheet, go into the reports drop down, go into the company and financial, taking a look at the balance sheet standard. Balance sheet standard. We're then going to change the date range up top by customizing the report and the dates going from 010120 to 123120. That's January 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2020. Then we'll change the fonts and numbers by changing the fonts here and change it to 11 and OK. Yes and OK. So we're back to the simplified file where we have uh, recorded the investments just as one number, the net, and we've recorded the home at one number, the net. Now we're going to be entering the loan. You'll note we have the home on at $700,000. we are going to record the related mortgage to it down below. Now there's a bit of a challenge here because we've been making payments on this loan. So if we go to the, re to the profit loss by going to reports up top, company financial, and going to the profit and loss report, Changing the dates from 010120 to 1231-20. Then I'll change the, the fonts and numbers, customizing fonts. You don't have to do this, but I'll do it. Hopefully it makes it easier to see. And we'll say, okay. So here's our report. Now, we, we've been making payments on the mortgage down here. And we've been just recording the entire expense to mortgage expense. Which is kind of nice. So these two payments, if we double click on them are related to this loan that we're going to set up. And so they should have gone to the loan kind of, right? And so, but they're kind of nice to have down here because if I look at, if I use, if I close this out, if I use this statement as a budgeting tool, it's kind of nice to see this expense on the expense side of the whole payment so that I can see what's actually going out from more of a cash basis. So what we're going to do is kind of use a, a, a basically an, an easy method, a simplified method to allow us to stay on this cash basis and still record the loan balance and adjust the loan balance at least periodically. That's our goal. And then next time we'll talk about how to really do it properly from an accrual basis standpoint. All right, so to do that, we're first going to put the loan on the books. So we're going to go to the lists up top. We're going to go to the chart of accounts. We can't do it from the check register because we didn't actually have a check. No cash is affected. What we need to do is set up a loan and we've got to set up that... Um, that that loan as a liability account so we'll go down to the accounts drop up and we will go to a new account and we'll say that it's going to be a loan type of account and then continue and it put it on the books as an other current liability as opposed to a long-term liability now you could consider it either i like to keep it in current because it, you know there is a portion of it that is at least current. We won't be breaking out between current and long term. So you could choose one or the other, whichever you prefer to see it in. And then we'll we'll say the name of it. I'm just going to call it loan on the home. If we had if we had a institution, we can put the institution. If we had multiple loans, then we might want to put the loan number in our accounts. It doesn't look as pretty on the statement, but it's easier for us to go back and see. So that might be used, uh, you know, worth do it. We'll save and close this. By the way, I'm not going to put the opening balance equity. We're going to enter it ourselves so we can choose what that second account will be instead of having QuickBooks choose for us. So save and close. And then we're going to go into this and then record the loan balance. So we'll double click on it. Now, what we're going to say is if we go back to our documentation, when we first took out the loan, when we purchased the property, we're going to say that the loan was 383621 so we'll put the loan on the books as that amount first and show you what we can then do to make changes you know, as we go. Uh, but note that you may, you may just want to, when you first start out, just put the loan balance in uh, as it is at the point in time that you're entering the data into the system and it should be fine. But I want to put in the beginning balance and then we'll make a change because the loan balance is going to change. 
and we have we haven't been changing it as we make payments so that's kind of the issue we'll have to be dealing with so then we'll, we'll take that uh, 383 uh, 621 and let's go back to our quickbooks file and i'm going to put that in as of 12 31 19 the day before the year we are working in and we'll put it as uh, this is going to be an increase to the loan balance and this is going to be for 383 621 and then the other side where's the other side going to go equity so we could put it to the profit and loss and it'll wash out because we're in the period prior to when we started entering data but even if we put it in the middle of the year as when we were entering data if we put it to the equity account it will not affect net income so i'm going to put it to equity and then say okay yes okay and we should be good we'll close that out go back to our balance sheet and now if we scroll down now we've got this loan on the books it's the loan for the home for the 383 uh, 621 and that of course is related to the home up top so the home is the asset the the loan it has the has the home as collateral but they're not exactly linked in that they're the same thing right this is a loan that we have that we use the home as collateral for and that of course the other side of it brought down the equity account substantially so if we if we double click on the equity we could see that that these two should net out if i go back to 2019 we see the home went on the books here and then the loan so note that they they net each other out on the equity section on our net value our net worth for our personal quickbooks file so if we do them in two separate formats there and net them out to equity they'll net out in the equity and we'll be okay so we'll close this back out now our challenge is to say well what happens when you know if we're making payments on the loan we never wrote down this account like you would think when we made the payments on the profit and loss if we go to the profit and loss we made these payments double clicking on the mortgage and instead of decreasing the loan we just wrote them as an expense which isn't quite right they should be decreasing the loan but again it's kind of nice to have them over here how can we how can we uh, then adjust the loan well from a periodic basis we can go to our balance sheet and say okay here's what the loan balance is what does the loan balance say on our current statement from the bank and then just adjust this balance to the bank statement amount so that's what we'll do here we'll say okay if we go and they say if we if we scroll down and say this is the loan that we're on we'll talk about this amortization table a little bit later but let's say we're right here and that's our our current balance and and this is a lot different than the balance we're currently at but just if it wasn't that different like let's say we did this every once in a while to adjust the loan balance to the current balance then we can say okay this is where it should be and this is an amortization table we'll, we'll talk about how to make this next time when we do the more detailed method but this is at 324 458 minus and then if we go back here we say that our loan balance here is at 383 621 we need to decrease this balance by the 59 163 so it's been a long time since we've adjusted the loan because we've just been writing it off the whole thing to the income statement so this balance is way too high all right so let's just that we're going to go to to do that we'll go to lists oh it's already open chart of accounts in the open windows and then we'll go to that loan double click on it and let's make this as of 0228.20. We need to adjust this down by 59.163. And that'll, that'll bring it down. But where does the other side go? Well, ultimately, it goes to equity. And so let's see why that'll be okay in the long run, at least. If we select the drop down and we go to equity, which I'm going to put it into owner's equity, we could make another account called you know loan adjustment to equity or something like that but i'm going to put it into the equity and say okay and that's fine we'll close this back out if we go back to the balance sheet then now we've now we've got the loan at what we believe the current balance should be based on the current the last loan statement we had 
and the other side didn't affect the income statement, but we took it straight to equity. Why is that okay? Because in the long run, the, the income statement is going to close out to equity anyways. So it'll wash out after, after the end of the year. So in other words, on an accrual basis, if we went back to the loan over here, these payments that we made should only be recording the interest portion and not the principal portion. Um, but that, but again, we'd like to see it on a cash basis, oftentimes on a, the whole thing, so we can budget on it. If, if we're using this on just a cash basis budgeting or a more of a cash basis budgeting. So in any case, so if we record the whole thing there, then it's overstated by that amount, but the whole thing is going to go into net income. And then at the end of the year, net income is just going to roll into the balance sheet anyway. So in other words, if I go to the balance sheet, that's 17. 898 if i go to the balance sheet is right there that's from the income statement and if we look at the following year 2021 if i make this 2021 this whole thing will just roll into equity see now it just rolls in into owner's equity so it's all in equity it all ends up in equity anyways so in the short run it's not quite right on an accrual basis but this method could make it so we can we can record the loan payments on a cash basis on the income statement and kind of budget on it and then periodically whenever we feel like it either each statement or quarterly or monthly or or a yearly even adjust the loan balance to the proper balance by just taking the other side to equity in this format so we're just going back in and, and once we have these balance sheet accounts set up we can just go through them periodically and say okay i need to shore these up and then just go shore them up uh, using the methods we're, we're going through here. So that's one method we can use. Next time, we'll take a look at the more complex accrual method, which will record the profit and loss on properly on an accrual basis, but uh, not as easily to use for a cash basis budgeting, meaning we're only going to record the interest portion here, reduce the loan balance by the, by the other side of it. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.